Hey guys, it's Kelsey here, and today I want to share with you a book that I recently read that I fell in love with. It's called The Winner's Curse, and it's by Marie Rutkowski. Sorry if I'm butchering her name, um, but anyway, The Winner's Curse. And um, one of the first things that grabbed me about this book was the cover. I thought it was really, really cool. I love the way it was um, done differently. Like, obviously, titles normally go horizontally, and this one was vertical. And I just really love the picture on the front, too. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and I also liked that even, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but even the page numbers were done sideways. And the, um, where it says the winner's curse over here was done sideways in the chapter. So I thought that was a, a really cool element. I love it when books do subtle little things like that through the whole book. Um, it just makes it feel more like they thought about the whole book and not just the writing of it, which obviously the writing is the most important, but it really is those subtle little details that um, keep your attention and make you notice things. So um, quick synopsis of the book. Um, she There's this girl, Kestrel, and she lives in a world where um, I think it's by age 20, you either have to be married or join the military. And they're very um, military, high society, but their military has taken over multiple countries. And the country that her, she and her father live in, and her father is very high up in the army. He, um, I don't want to say he runs the city, but he um, is definitely one of the top people in the city as the general. Um, but the country they live in, they had taken over several years ago when she was a child, and um, all the people that used to live in the city are now slaves, and they were called the Harani. Um, so she finds herself at an auction one day with a friend of hers. Um, she's not allowed to go out unescorted since she's not married and not in the military. But um, she finds herself at an auction one day, and there's this um, young man that comes on to the auction block, and the auctioneer is saying that he um, is a blacksmith, he would be perfect for um, a house that has its own guard that, you know, needs a blacksmith, and that he also sings beautifully. So, of course, she just thinks about this, and there's something about her that attracts her to him, and she buys him for a lot of money. More money than she should, more money than he's worth. Um, she just has to have this slave, even though she has never bought a slave before, and it's just really out of character for her. So she brings this boy home, and they put him to work in the blacksmith forge, and you, their relationship kind of develops, but it's very, very slowly. Um, this book was not a super quick read for me, which um, you guys know all the time I'm talking about how quick I read through a book or how this book really held my attention. And while this book did hold my attention, it wasn't a fast read. Like, I really slowed down and really savored the book. Um, so that's one thing that even though the plot was really well written, it, the things played out much more slowly than I expected. Even though it's a fairly short book, I think it's a little over 300 pages about 340, 350 pages. Um, so that was kind of interesting to me that it wasn't as fast paced as a lot of young adult books are. The other thing is, I did not realize that this was a trilogy until I read read online more about the book because I wanted to see if there were um, other books by the same author. Um, but So that's one thing that I like about the book, that it kind of wrapped everything up but it left it open. Kind of like when you see a movie and you're like, hmm, they left it wide open for a sequel, but then there's never a sequel. But apparently this is the first in trilogy. And I cannot wait to read the second one. Um, just because I want to see more of this world that this author has created. It's, it's, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just very interesting the way they have the slaves and the masters and this kind of war-driven, conquering society, um, but they don't seem war-driven. They seem like a good people. I just, I don't know. I can't come to terms with the characters. I feel like they're so well-written, um, 
but there's definitely some things like that that all the people seem very nice but of course I suppose you're only seeing teenage characters so of course they're not going to be quite as war driven as adults but um, that's one thing I would say looking back on it now that I'm like talking to you guys about it that I would say since it's a militaristic type of book you would think there would be more of that reflected in their society as a whole um, anyway I just want to point out um, a couple of things though First of all, um, is it just me or does it feel like every good book is in a trilogy now? I feel like every teenage book, especially teenage, is in a trilogy. Um, I don't know if that's because of the success that trilogies have had lately at like becoming huge and in movies or whatnot, or if they feel like the stories are just too big for one book. I don't know, but um, that's one thing that I found to be really interesting. And another thing that I found to be interesting um, a new trend is a lot of trilogies or a lot of series lately have been coming out with these online only um, short stories set in the same world as the books. I know the Divergent series has um, some short stories coming out about the character 4. I know this book has um, a short story online that I bought. I haven't read it yet but I just bought it last night. Um, I know, let's see a book that I just reviewed called Ruins and Rising, or um, Shadow and Bone, it's part of a whole trilogy. Um, it's got multiple short stories, so I think that's a really interesting trend that they're trying to keep our interest up um, with these short stories set in the same world, which I completely love because I think it's a really interesting idea to, you create this whole world, why not use it a little bit more and tell us more stories about these people or the land that you have created in um, your whole series or your whole you know trilogy so that's just kind of an aside that I find to be interesting a couple of interesting trends lately um, but this book was definitely really good it felt definitely more like a young adult read there's very few adults in the book um, especially ones that are like involved so it definitely feels more like a teen book but it was so well written and I found the title The Winner's Curse to be kept through the book and you really understand why it's called the winner's curse by the end of it and I found it to be a very interesting concept um, as to why she named her book that so anyway if you're looking for a good teen read um, winner's curse the winner's curse is definitely one that I would check out um, so let me know what you're reading if you've read this book leave me a comment in the comment section and we can discuss it um, if you're reading something that you think I'd like to read, let me know and maybe I'll even do a book review on it in the future. I just want to know um, what you guys would recommend because I'm always looking for a good book to read. So thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you again really really soon.